The shotgun world is a mess of old standards and notations, and nowhere is this more evident than the way we define bore diameters. Just about everyone is familiar with the terms, 12 gauge, 20 gauge, etc., but what exactly does gauge mean, and how does it translate to an actual diameter? Well, to answer that properly, we have to go way back. In the Napoleonic era, cannons were commonly described by the weight of the shot used in them. An iron cannonball sized for a 12 pound gun, for example, would weigh 12 pounds, at least in theory. Some of the smoothbore muzzle-loading small arms of the time adopted a similar notation, where their bore diameters were described by the number of matching lead balls that could be cast from a pound of lead. A musket for which 12 round balls could be made out of a pound of pure lead would be known as a 1 12th of a pounder, or 12 gauge or 12 bore for short. The math here isn't too complex. The mass of a ball is simply volume times density, and since a gauge is the number of balls per pound, it is equal to the reciprocal of the ball's mass in pounds. This lets you easily work out the gauge equivalent of any bore diameter if you know the density of lead. To find diameter from gauge, simply rearrange the equation. In addition to single projectiles, these old smoothbore firearms could be loaded with multiple smaller shot if an application called for it, even if they weren't specifically designed as fouling pieces. While modern rifle barrels have seen significant technological advancements and design changes since the smoothbore days, shotgun barrels have remained virtually unchanged apart from some material and structural improvements, and are still usually defined by gauge today. With old muzzle-loading shotguns, the gauge could be pretty much anything the gunsmith or customer fancied. All that really needed to be sized to the bore were the wads, and most users simply cut those themselves. But with the advent of self-contained, mass-produced shot shells, along with more complex breech loading and repeating shotguns, ammo manufacturers and gun makers began to focus on smaller numbers of standardized gauges. This trend continued as advancements in powders and components improved and expanded shot shell capabilities across the board, and as a result, only a handful of the most popular gauges remain in use today. The largest you'll see on gun store shelves now is the 10 gauge, which has a theoretical bore diameter of .775 inches. Long since superseded by the 12 gauge as an all-around chambering, the 10 gauge lives on today primarily as a waterfowling gauge, since its big 3.5 inch shells can hold large quantities of low-density, non-toxic shot. Though with its newer 3.5 inch super magnum spec and improved non-toxic shot materials, the 12 gauge is no longer far behind. You can also find buckshot, slugs, and heavy lead birdshot loads for the 10 gauge, but again, these won't really let you do much you couldn't with a less bulky 12 gauge shotgun. The 10 gauge is fine if you're into the novelty of the big shells, or you want a dedicated waterfowling gun for use with steel shot. Otherwise, the 12 gauge can be about as effective and is much more versatile and widely available. Our formula spits out a standard diameter of .729 inches for the 12 gauge. Actual bore diameters can deviate from this, but they usually land between .725 and .735 inches. Since the early 1900s, the 12 has established itself as a leading all-purpose gauge, and is easily the most popular size in use today. It's large enough to pattern well with just about any common shot size, and its typical lead shot payloads of between 1 ounce and 1 and a quarter ounce are very well balanced for sporting, hunting, and combat alike. Because of the 12 gauge's popularity, light loads of 7 8 ounce or less are also available, as are magnum loads of up to 1 and 7 8 ounces. The higher pressure 3.5 inch 12 gauge super magnum introduced in the late 1980s can send two or more ounces of lead downrange. Reloaders enjoy an enormous amount of support for the 12 gauge, and no other chambering offers the same variety of factory buckshot, slug, and novelty loads, or such inexpensive and easy to find practice ammo. If you want one gun that you can use for everything and always find ammo for, the 12 gauge is the clear winner. The 20 gauge shot shell, with its characteristic yellow hole, is also a very popular size. Both math and standard specs assign the 20 gauge a bore diameter of .615 inches. The standard 20 gauge birdshot load is 7 eighths of an ounce of lead shot, though magnums can contain up to 1 and a quarter or 1 and 5 sixteenths ounces. There are also a variety of 20 gauge slugs available for use in both smoothbore and rifled barrels, along with buckshot loads suitable for personal defense and some hunting. The 20 gauge's narrower bore leads to shells and guns that are noticeably more compact and easier to carry than 12 gauge equivalents, and its typically lighter payloads produce less recoil. This makes it very well suited for most upland hunting, as well as an excellent choice for younger or smaller statured shooters. It's also an effective and family friendly home defense gauge. With the 20 gauge's reduced shell volume, it doesn't perform as well as the 12 with large shot sizes or heavy payloads, and larger buckshot pellets don't stack well in the narrower space. 
so it can't match the capabilities of the bigger and more versatile 12 gauge for certain things like waterfowl hunting or long range trap. Those applications aside though, the 20 is a very useful, capable, and popular gauge, a favorite of many shotgunners. Between the popular 12 and 20 gauges lies a much less prevalent 16 gauge with a theoretical .663 inch bore diameter, though you may also see it described as .662 or .665. As its gauge number suggests, the 16 gauge is practically tailor made for a 1 ounce shot load, but it also does well loaded down to 7 eighths of an ounce or up to 1 and a quarter ounces. It can handle shot big enough to knock just about anything out of the air, and it'll even fit larger buckshot reasonably well. The 16 gauge has a special place in the heart of many shotgunners, who view it as a gentleman's gauge of years past, the kind of shotgun the most interesting man in the world would probably use. More practically, a 16 gauge bore strikes a very nice balance between the versatility of the 12 gauge and the compact size of the 20, and it was a very widely used small bore gauge up until the 20 overtook it in the 1970s. There are a number of reasons for its current status, including the absence of a 16 gauge skeet class, competition from the 3 inch 20 gauge introduced in the 1950s, and its limited capacity for low density non-toxic shot. But a more fundamental issue is that with modern components and loads, there really isn't much of a niche for the 16 gauge in its current form. Looking purely at shot size and payload weights, a 2 and 3 quarter inch 16 gauge load won't do anything that a 12 gauge or magnum 20 gauge couldn't. And on top of that, ammo companies and gun makers seem to have pretty much given up on the 16 gauge. It still hasn't received the 3 inch magnum spec it needs to be a competitive multi-purpose chambering, and many current and recent production 16 gauge shotguns from major manufacturers are simply underboard 12 gauge designs with no weight or size advantages. The 16 gauge isn't dead yet though, and while it's not as popular as it once was, it is still a very well balanced gauge, and there are a lot of older 16 gauge shotguns still in circulation. If you're in possession of one of these sweet 16s, you can still find a wide enough variety of birdshot, buckshot, and slugs to hunt most game, and any gaps can easily be filled by reloading. What the 20 gauge is to the 12, the 28 gauge is to the 20. The 28 gauge has a bore diameter of .55 inches. Typical loads contain 3 quarters of an ounce of birdshot, but you can also find some heavier loads of 7 eighths or 1 ounce. Shot sizes up to number 4 are available, though the wider 20 gauge would tend to handle number 6 and larger shot better. Slugs exist for the 28 gauge, but they're not too common, and if you want buckshot, you'll probably need to hand load it. Really though, if you want slugs, buckshot, and heavy 1 ounce payloads, you might as well just go with the 20 gauge. The little 28 is at its best as a soft shooting upland and skeet gauge. Purpose built 28 gauge shotguns can be even lighter and trimmer than 20 gauges, but they'll still dust clays and kill birds cleanly with a little skill. It probably wouldn't be a great choice for new shotgun owners, since 20 gauge shells are easier to find, less expensive, and more versatile. But the little 28 has a healthy following among experienced shotgunners, and it isn't difficult to see why. The smallest common shot shell size is the 410, which is a bit of an oddity. As you might have guessed from the preceding decimal point, this isn't a gauge, it's a caliber. 410 shotguns have bore diameters of .41 inches, which is roughly 67 and a half gauge. The standard load for the 2.5 inch 410 is just half an ounce of birdshot, while 3 inch shells can contain 11 sixteenths or 3 quarters of an ounce of shot. Birdshot sizes up to number 4 are available, though anything larger than typical target shot doesn't tend to pattern well. 410 slugs are very lightweight, typically 1 fifth or 1 quarter of an ounce. The 410 is not a terribly versatile chambering, but it does have some uses. With just a paltry half ounce of shot on tap, breaking clays becomes quite the challenge, and there's a special 410 only skeet class. It is also useful for close range pest control, and the very small size and light weight of 410 shells and guns has led to their frequent inclusion in emergency survival kits. Some consider 410s to be good youth guns, and many a lifetime shotgunner got their start with a simple 410 single shot. However, others argue that the 410's mini school payloads and thin shot patterns are more likely to just frustrate beginners, and a similar shotgun in a larger gauge would be a better and more useful choice for most young shooters. More controversial than that, though, is the idea of the 410 as a defensive cartridge. Recent years have seen the introduction of a number of 410 firearms marketed as self-defense pieces, as well as a plethora of new 410 buckshot and slug loads intended for use in those guns. Those who fancy the 410 as a defensive chambering often do so under the idea that since it's a shot shell, it must pack the punch of a shotgun. I explained in the previous video in this series how buckshot's legendary stopping power is all about quantity over quality. Well, the 410 can't really offer that quantity. A load of 410 buckshot is about equivalent to a few FMJs from a small caliber pocket pistol. 
While that could be an effective stopper, at least at close range before the deformed pellets have a chance to spread, it doesn't really compare to the power of even non-magnum buckshot loads from a full-size shotgun. But while an argument could be made for 410 buckshot, 410 slugs don't offer much in comparison to other pistol rounds. Despite their size, they only weigh about as much as 380 ACP bullets, and are far less advanced than the jacketed hollow points used in modern defensive handgun ammunition. If you're thinking of getting a 410 for use primarily with slugs, you'd probably be better served by a similar firearm in a more conventional cartridge. Well that about wraps up the modern shot shell options. Virtually all current production shotguns are chambered in one of these six gauges. However, there are a few other gauges that still see some use today. Two of these are the 24 gauge and the 32 gauge, which perform similarly to the 28 gauge. There are a number of old 24 and 32 gauge shotguns still taking game or breaking clays, and components and even loaded shells are available to feed them. On the other end of the size scale is the old 8 gauge. Though long since rendered obsolete for hunting, it currently has some industrial applications, and there are still working 8 gauge guns in the hands of collectors, so sources exist for 8 gauge ammo and components. Finally, there are the really rare shot shell sizes that are no longer used, but are still studied and collected by hobbyists. These include the experimental 14 gauge Winchester toyed with introducing in the 1960s, garden gun shells even smaller than the 410, 4 gauge and larger punt gun shells, and a whole bevy of other oddball gauge, inch, and metric sizes. But unless you're a big collector, these six sizes are what you'll be dealing with as a shotgun owner today. Hopefully this video was a good introduction and overview for these. If you're here trying to decide what gauge to get into and you still have questions, I'll be happy to answer them as best I can. Generally though, for new shooters I'd recommend the 12 gauge as a solid do everything shotgun, the 20 if you want something a bit lighter and softer shooting for home defense, skeet, or upland hunting, and the 410 for plinking, an ultralight survival gun, or maybe a starter shotgun for younger kids who can't quite handle a 20. Until next time, please have fun and shoot safely and responsibly.